Kathy Lords from Intact is going to start us off. Take it away, Kathy. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Intact provides financial man management and accounting solutions in the cloud for mid-sized organizations. And as with most companies, everybody defines mid-sized organizations in a very different way. So our definition spans really that that 10-person company that's just getting off of an early stage system like a QuickBooks, all the way up to several thousands of employees that may be a public entity, global in nature. And so when you think about the types of organizations that Intact sells to, they're very different in terms of their sophistication level, they're very different in terms of their expectations from a mission critical system vendor. And so we've really had some interesting challenges, I think, as we approach this topic of customer success. And, and probably unpopular in the room, I am actually accountable for both new business sales and customer success. And it really provides for some interesting conversations for myself in terms of should we close this deal? Well, I don't know. Can we make them successful for the next seven to 10 years? Well, I don't know. I really need to hit my bookings number this quarter. And so it really becomes an interesting conversation and balance. I will say that as we continue to scale, I fully anticipate that this function will ultimately become a separate organization. Um, and I think one of the interesting things about what we've done, and just to talk about what we've sort of termed as advocacy for life at Intact, is it's really a whole company initiative. So although the customer success team specifically does, from an organizational perspective, roll up to me, I have shared responsibilities for this function across the organization. And so we really look at this from the standpoint of how do you engineer customer success into the product? How do you think about how you make it easy to use, easy to deploy, easy to learn? And so everybody in our product management and engineering organization thinks about that. And then in terms of the day-to-day -day management of driving customer success, I share that with our VP of Client Services who owns professional services and our customer support organization. And so we work very closely on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of how do we you know, drive that ultimate customer success? Because sometimes it's a matter of education. Sometimes it's a matter of a product issue or lag. Because frankly, you know, if you're working for a software company at software, it will have issues. It's how you handle that issue and how you work with that customer. <clears throat> One of the other interesting things that we've done in terms of creating this program, and it's what I mentioned earlier on, is we actually segment our customer base based on vertical and size and drive the engagement model based on those segmentations, which you can understand you know, the way a 15-person uh, creative services agency wants to be managed by their financial management systems vendor is very different than, say, the way a organization like a Marketo or a Guidewire or somebody that's large and global like that wants to be managed and, and the type of relationship they want to have. Now, in terms of working with marketing, um, sort of the bullet points on the right give a high-level synopsis of that. And what they really do for us today is they're the facilitation. So we utilize Salesforce, we utilize Marketo. And so they drive those Marketo campaigns for us. We create the materials, they'll help make it look pretty. But we're driving that core content and they help us deliver that core content to our customer base. Um, one of the other things they do is they will actually um, help run campaigns for our user conference. They actually drive the facilitation of the user conference, whereas we make it a whole company initiative uh, with significant input and direction from customer success to drive that event. And one of the things that I think is, is really interesting, and this is where we're just embarking on this for so for those of you who are interested in how it's going today, you'll have to come back to me in 90 to 120 days, and I can give you the details. But um, as we're launching into what we're getting ready to start our new fiscal year in July, is really creating a nurture track, if you will, for our customers. So you know, knowing that I own new business sales, I'm very familiar with, you know, you're trying to acquire new customers, whether you use Marketo or Eloquella or HubSpot or Pardo. Um, you're creating a lot of focus and materials and milestones and triggers based on what's happening with that prospect 
as you're trying to gain their business. And then all of a sudden, as you sign them up as a customer, it's like, oh, well, you know, we assign a customer success manager and they call them at this periodic time and life is great. Well, not really. And so what we found out really we wanted to do as a best practice was to create this nurture track for our customers that's milestone based. And it really based on if they get a new CFO, they're going through an acquisition, maybe they're launching a new product, they're launching in a new country to be able to get them the right information at the right time. And so because the usage of our product is very different by vertical and size as well, we're creating variations of that that's then very much uh, facilitated by our marketing automation tool to be able to have that personalized so that each customer feels like we're having an intimate conversation with them and that we understand their business and we understand the challenges they have, where they're going, but we can do that now as an organization in a very, very scalable way. The last piece that we're including as part of this is, is we're, we're growing the team and, and doubling it almost year over year just based on customer growth, is defining specific playbooks for each of these scenarios. So when a milestone is achieved with a customer, what should that customer success manager do? What are those activities so that you ensure that each of your customers has not only a phenomenal experience, but a very consistent experience as well. And so this is part of our kind of whole company initiative to drive this advocacy for life with our customers. And who's that? Scott, that's Aaron. Right, um, big round of applause to Kathleen. Yay, bravo for Aaron! What a bravo for Aaron! Awesome. All right, thanks. So my name's Aaron Stead. I'm from Infusionsoft. Uh, we have a little bit interesting application of customer success. So we serve true small businesses, uh, under 10 employees, We've got tens of thousands of customers. We don't do any contracts. And so this is an interesting game for us. And uh, I, I want to start by, by telling a story. So there weren't a lot of hands that went up when, when the room was asked, do, uh, do you believe this should live in sales? Here's a little anecdotal story for you. Four years ago, I got a, I got a call to go into the principal's office, which is code for our CEO, my boss. <laughs> and in there was our VP of customer service. And she had lots of unpleasantries to exchange with me. And, uh, and it, so I'll fast forward to the end of the shouting. And it went something like this. You know, you in sales, you, you always get to have the party. And here, and here in customer service, we're the ones that get the hangover. <laughs> and and it's, it's true. It's true. So unfortunately for my head, I, I get to have the party and the hangover now. So um, uh, it's been a fun challenge for us to, to dig into customer success. And, and as Kathy mentioned, you really have to make a decision. And do you want to bring these customers on board? Do you want to bring them on board with the expectations that were set during the sales process? So I would submit that customer success is sales and marketing, and it is the, it is the equivalent of sales and marketing in the subscription business. So at Infusionsoft, we really think about customer success like sales. Um, there's a quote out there, I can't remember who said it, but the easiest way to win at anything is to make the rules. So you, you have control of what the definition of success is pre-sales. So as you are working with your sales leadership, with your marketing message and communication and positioning, you're really already setting that customer up for success or failure. And then, then is the time to do it. Before they pay the money, go through the implementation, struggle through the technology, have all the, have all the feedback that comes to your CS team, um, setting expectations early on. So, um, so we function like a sales team in customer success. Uh, we get our feedback loop into the hands of our new business development folks on a weekly basis. We tailor our sales methodology and our sales process based on feedback that's coming in from customer success. Um, we identify our target and the customers we're bringing on board um, prior to in our in our marketing and marketing positioning and our sales strategy. So, um, you know, deploy traditional marketing automation to support human capital. You know, we've, we've got uh, you know, roughly 24,000 customers on, on one of our software products. That's not, a, that's not at, at $260 to $280 a month. That's not a real viable proposition for me to go apply 100 bodies to reach out to, um, to those customers. So leveraging tools like Gainsight and Analytics, 
um, based on where that customer is, apply the, the beauty and the value and the scalability of marketing automation. And um, ongoing education is a big focus for us. So uh, whether you're an at-risk customer that's, that's scored red, or whether you are a super happy uh, customer that could possibly spend more money or, or provide customer referrals, we're leveraging automation and technology uh, to do it scale effectively and, and, and in a scalable way. Um, key lessons learned, obviously, it's find the smoke before it comes fire. The difference in conversation and tone of, of the call when you proactively reach out to someone and say, hey, this just lo looks like it's not working for you. What can we do to make you successful? Here's five things, here's three things, here's two things that customers like you that were struggling with this, 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 and this did to become successful. Always invest more than you think. Um, I, I, I was in a meeting yesterday and, and how many in here have seen Gary Vee's Inc. 500 rant about what's the ROI of your mother? It's, it's a good one. If you, have, if you haven't seen it, um, truth, truthfully, if you haven't seen it, go, go check it out. Um, something that we've learned is always invest more than you think. And if you're a leader of this function, you're going to, to ask for the money or the budget or the focus or the software. Um, double it, triple it, quadruple it, find metrics to manage it, uh, and, and always invest more than you think. Thank you. Okay, anybody up for a drum roll for Rolly? Who's going to up for a roll? Woo! Thank you. Uh, so, just wanted to quickly introduce myself uh, before we jump into what LinkedIn does. I'm how many of you know what LinkedIn does? Never heard of it. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Uh, I um, actually am, I have a unique uh, experience in terms of uh, what I do. I head up the regional sales organization for LinkedIn Town Solutions. It's about a hundred million dollar business. But till about two weeks ago, I used to head up the global customer success organization for LinkedIn. And um, it, uh, it's, it's a 200 people global organization that really manages uh, and retains a uh, billion dollars of business for us. So the interesting thing, the reason I'm sort of sharing some of this is I am a firm believer of, uh, of the fact that sales and customer success should live in, in separate organizations. So, um, <laughs> I had some fan of that too. <laughs> So we can, we can, anyone who doesn't, you know, I'm happy to chat about it uh, later. Uh, so for LinkedIn, so LinkedIn actually, I want to talk a little bit about LinkedIn for a few minutes. Uh, it is it is the largest professional network on the internet. Uh, it has about 300 million members. Uh, and um, for us, uh, the reason I'm sort of sharing some of it is a lot of people don't really recognize that LinkedIn actually has an enterprise entity as well. Uh, we actually have our, our revenue is very diversified, and we get uh, revenue from three lines of businesses. Our talent solutions business, which is really selling to recruiting organizations. Our marketing solutions business, which sells to the marketing uh, function, and sales solutions for business development. So uh, those are, you know, so with, with that dual identity, customer success is pretty interesting for us. And uh, we actually are both a consumer <coughs> and, an, and an enterprise. What that means is it actually creates an interesting but a unique challenge for us. Our, our customers are our members too. So everything we do, everything from our product, marketing, sales strategy, we really put it in context of making our members successful first before we really do anything around our customer success. So, so at the core, we want to make sure our members are productive and successful. We sell both online and offline, so we've got uh, about 2,500 field sales or field uh, folks on the field sales team. Uh, and uh, like you know, like uh, most companies of this size with, with about a billion dollars, we actually have customers which are you know individual members that buy subscription online to multinational uh, firms that spend millions and millions of dollars with us. With all those complexity, our customer success philosophy is actually pretty simple. We really believe in making our customers successful and feeling successful. You know, everyone in this room is, is, is talking about making customers successful and believe that's an important thing, that's why we're all here. But we also feel and firmly believe that making, making our customers feel successful is a very, very important piece as well. And that's, that is where marketing really helps us in a meaningful way. 
So in the next couple of slides, I'll really, really quickly talk about how marketing has been helping us in, in uh, and how we've been integrating product marketing strategies into really making our customers successful and field successful. So we, again, uh, we have a unified, uh, unified success strategy, which includes really building a product for the user first. So our product strategy is all about making a product that's, that's, that'll make the individual user successful. We layer the enterprise success at the secondary level. <coughs> marketing is all about focus. Marketing focuses on educating our customers throughout the life cycle to ensure that they are successful with it. <coughs> Right. And then our customer success strategy. Um, so I'm, a, I'm actually originally a, uh, a marketeer. And uh, as a marketeer, I firmly believe you need to really segment and target your, your success strategy as well. So I believe, and we've actually in, instituted uh, a, a strategy which really focuses on not only making your users successful, your account successful, but also don't forget about the decision maker. And that's where when you actually make all three levels successful, that is where you really see sales marketing really integrate well with overall strategy. <coughs> Few examples on how our marketing team's been really helping uh, in, in making, making our customers feel successful and celebrating their successes. Uh, the first example actually here is uh, on our consumer side. So what we did here is we actually celebrated some of our members who've been who've been really using our product uh, effectively, who are highly engaged on LinkedIn, uh, and uh, and believe it or not, I mean their profiles are really really good. So we actually did a marketing campaign, which basically said, "Hey Jay, uh, congratulations! You are actually in the top five percent of uh, of our member base that whose profiles are are being viewed." Can you, I mean, this is, this campaign went viral. This campaign was phenomenal. And every, I mean, we got thousands and thousands of emails and, and uh, tweets on, on that. Our member base, which is our customer, is, uh, is, 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 is delighted to be, to be working with us. And that's as far as celebrating <coughs> our successes, uh, our member successes. On the customer side, we are actually, this is a sneak, sneak preview. We haven't launched this campaign, but coming out soon. Um, on, our, on, on, our, on our customer side, uh, the recruit, uh, we actually are celebrating successes of our recruiter customers. So here in this case, we actually uh, are congratulating Adam to say, hey Adam, congratulations for, for uh, really transforming lives of 27 people throughout, through your recruiting effort, leveraging LinkedIn. 27 people that you hired have a new career trajectory. Uh, we tested this, this campaign with some of our customers and uh, the, the feedback was phenomenal. In fact, the test group really printed out these, these certificates and put it on the wall. Every recruiter <laughs> wants to not just recruit, they want to transform careers. And this really hits success at a very, very personal level. Huge way to leverage marketing to really drive that loyalty. Um, We don't limit uh, our customer success and making them feel successful with just uh, email campaigns. We actually have, um, you know, we, we run events. We've got a LinkedIn 100 event where we actually bring uh, customers for two days, really uh, get them to, 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 to talk to industry leaders, share best practices with each other, and give them LinkedIn 100 cape. I mean, you can see in this picture here, uh, our customers are super excited to walk around with our LinkedIn, LinkedIn uh, cape. So again, tying back, if you have successful customers, give them, make them feel special. They will come back uh, as well. Uh, last tip, uh, and I know I have to wrap up soon. So uh, last tip here, firm belief within LinkedIn, if you cannot measure it. If you, if you, got, you, if you cannot measure it, you cannot fix it. So data, data, data. Just make sure that we, you know, you're tracking all the elements. We, we really like to track, uh, track data on both metrics. <coughs> One on, are we making our customers successful? So there are ROI metrics as well as usage metrics that we track at the granular level, but also feel successful. So the feel successful uh, could be customer satisfaction, could be NPS, could be uh, other ways to really get that gauge of are our customers successful. 
So ultimately what you want to do is if you have a two by two, you really want your customers, if on one end it's make them successful and <coughs> feel successful, you really want your customers to be that advocate who's really happy with you, is successful who's really happy with you. And that's it, thank you. Thanks, Arali. Okay. One before last drum roll. Excellent. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, first of all, I was really intrigued by this. I don't know if you guys were as well, but by a show of hands, how many people in the room are not in sales, customer success, or marketing? That's a lot less hands that I, than I expected. Um, because earlier, no one really raised their hand. So I was wondering if people are trying to point fingers at sales, marketing, <laughs> customer success, or what you're looking to get out of this. But um, my name is Ted Purcell, and I'm with Clarison. And many customers of ours are in this room right now. I just met one about 15 minutes ago. We are a collaboration and project management company that helps com companies execute their work and deliver projects on time. Many professional services organizations in this room use Clarison, we're thankful to say. We have customers all over the globe and trying to support, sell, and market to 2,500 customers as we, in our land and expand context, is, is a very difficult task. And I agree, I do believe that ultimately it would be ideal if we had, if we could afford the opportunity to separate sales from customer success. Right now, I own sales and customer success at Clarison, but it's a scale issue more than anything else. As we work to scale the business, as we bring on more customers, and we're bringing on customers to the tune of hundreds of new customers a month in a variety of sizes and shapes, for us, having referenceability at the core of our business, customer success at the core of our business, is literally everything. And the way that I look at it is it's, it's I fashion it much like a, a white glove treatment that you get in your favorite restaurant. I don't care if it's a Stax pancake house or if it's a very fine restaurant. At the end of the day, you want everyone that you interact with to give you the best experience possible. I don't care if it's the, the host or hostess, the waiter or waitress, the busboy, the cooks, the line cooks. Everyone plays a really, really critical role. And our strategy at Clarison was to combine those efforts and that organization into one so that referenceability became the cornerstone of the business. And so for us, the keys are trying to align everybody giving, given the context that we've been in. And I don't know about you guys, actually by a show of hands, how many people work for companies with um, less than 250 people inside of them? Okay, so it's the multitude of the people in the room. I, 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 that's my environment. We're close to that, but it's chaos. It's managed chaos. And for us, as we started to scale and grow, managing growth is a very difficult task. We have daily cadence meetings with lead generation and marketing. By the way, that's two different organizations within our marketing organization, as well as customer success and sales. It's daily. For us, the lead generation funnel is literally everything. And last year, as we started to scale and grow the business, we had a major product overhaul, and that major product overhaul not only led to uh, a different user experience for our customers, but it led to a different way that we actually brand the business. And as you can imagine, that's a nightmare for everybody, and trying to consolidate everybody to get on the same page was no trivial task for us. And as I'd like to put it, my biggest focus was how do we get the right content in the right context in front of the right people at the right time? That literally was our main focus. And I put a little kumbaya slide in there just because I just like the word kumbaya. Um, so the, the, the customer engagement life cycle is a methodology that we truly believe in at Claris and, and it's something that quite frankly, the, one of the best enterprise software companies, if not the best enterprise software company in the world, SAP, they're, they very much, their, their focus is this customer engagement life cycle. And for us at Clarison, it was something that I learned early on that if we could manage the customer content, manage the customer experience, give them a white glove experience like I mentioned a little bit earlier, from the top of the funnel, all the way through the pre-sale cycle, through the close cycle, through the onboarding and training cycle, and then of course to the ongoing nurturing and referenceability cycle, 
that then we could be we could be successful. We could be on the same page. And for us, since referenceability was so crucial, we had a little bit of a challenge ourselves. And since most of you in this room are actually in companies that are less than 250 employees, you're probably experiencing the same thing. We actually specialized inside of customer success last year because we had a customer success one size fits all model where literally our CSMs did everything. They did pre-sales demos, they did technical support, they did professional services, they literally were doing God's work for lack of a better term. It was incredible. They're superheroes in my book. Two of them right here in the front row and I would say that even if they weren't here. Uh, and one of them's in a jacket right now. It's awesome. I've never seen it in a blazer before. Major respect. Uh, but the, 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 the concept of, of specializing inside of CS also really lent a hand to helping to consolidate that alignment between marketing, sales, and customer success. Because in bifurcating that organization, allowing people to specialize, not only was their hair no longer on fire, but they're able to focus and specialize in those areas and give our customers a much better experience. Thank you. Amen to that. <laughs> All right, so here's how it's going to work. A little different. So pay attention. <laughs> We're going to have four questions. Each question is going to be answered only by one person. So once that person answers, they cannot answer that question again. Sorry, folks, we have limited time. Um, out of those four questions, we're going to pick two that are going to be $25 for all of you who leave the room. You're just letting go of 25 bucks. <laughs> all right. Quickly show of hand. Who wants to ask the question? Yes. So you're a big advocate of separating sales and CSM. So can you give us your main reasons as to why? It seems like you're the only dissenter here. Can you repeat the question? Because I forgot. I said yes. What are you talking about? I said same thing. Yeah. Can you can you repeat the question? Just yeah. So the question is, since I'm the only detractor here or a distractor here, uh, why do I believe sale? That's true. Uh, why why do why, why, why do Ted and I believe that customer success and, uh, and sales should be in different functions? I think I think uh, it was a common theme that actually pretty much every panelist said it is at the right time of maturity of the organization it makes sense to separate them out. And I think if you look at the maturity of various organizations that we have here in the panelists, LinkedIn's probably in uh, far more mature than state. We've, we've now, like I said, I started the organization about three and a half years ago, so we've now reached a level of maturity. Um, the reasons why I believe customer success and sales should be in separate organizations is, number one, it is, uh, you really want your customer success organization to be focused, maniacally focused on, on uh, retaining your baseline. In case of LinkedIn, we have a billion dollars of our baseline. We absolutely don't want that organization to get distracted with actually pre-sales. It's with, with uh, really selling more. It's, it's very exciting to be part of the party and not be on the hangover. So if you are all in the, all in the same organization, there's a natural tendency to be part of the party and not you know. So um, that's that's like the number one. We really wanted to have focus. We wanted to have uh, clear goals and objectives of focus on the retention and focus on growth. The second reason is the uh, this is my experience. It's very very hard to hire people who are really really good in selling and really really good with customer success. That hybrid role doesn't exist. Right, uh, you generally end up hiring people middle of the ground when neither very good at selling nor they're very good at sales. So, so having 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 clarity uh, of, of roles is very important. So those are like I would say the two big reasons. Uh, it's it's good to have that clarity of roles. You hire the best salesperson. You hire the best uh, services person with clear clear goals. So one more question, and then we have to clear the room for. Apparently, there's another session here starting now. So. Uh. Um, maybe one quick question and then that's it. Go ahead. All right. So uh, let, let's say you, uh, uh, thank you. Um, in, in structuring your team, since you're responsible for both uh, sales and customer success, and this question is for anyone besides Ted, since I already know the answer to that, um, do you recommend uh, separating sales teams and customer success teams? or uh, intermixing them. So let's say you have uh, a, an enterprise rep with an enterprise sales engineer, enterprise CM, enterprise professional services, all in one group and then another group for a, a specific geography. So it, how do you break out your, your teams? 
for us because we, we serve a smaller customer. There's, there's not a ton of relationship investment there. It doesn't make sense for the same person to stick with that customer for life. So we separate out and specialize from new customer acquisition to fulfillment to upsell to customer success. We do the same thing. We have um, the divided by function. So new business sales owns that customer up through go live. Once the customer goes live, it gets transitioned to support and customer success. And then we have the customer success team broken out by the three customer market segments we've defined and, and execute differently against. And uh, all those teams are sitting in separate locations. So you have all the CSMs in one section. Actually, we have them all in basically two locations. We have two centers of excellence in Boston and San Jose, so that makes it a lot easier for cross-functional engagement. Same. They're all sitting by each other. In LinkedIn? <laughs> we actually, uh, so for our enterprise customers, yeah. we actually have them sitting in, in uh, together in pods. So we basically say, for this customer segment, the CSM, the, the rep, and um, you know, the, the, the solutions consultant, three sales, they all sit together because it creates, you know, one team effect working for the customer. So, guys, uh, the panelists are going to be here after the session. If you have additional questions for them, feel free to go ahead and ask them in private. Uh, thanks for the question.